The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 30, NASDAQ off 9, S&P's off 5.5. Gold, gold down eight dollars and thirty cents trading at fourteen sixty five an ounce. We get oil up ninety four cents trading fifty seven dollars ninety five cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the ten year down nine ticks one twenty nine sixteen. The thirty off twenty one at one fifty nine twenty one. Now that being said, folks, what you actually have out here inside the note and bond market once again we got volume on the way up yesterday you get monster volume on the way up today we've already done 1.3 million contracts in the 10 year now it's given it up at price but what i've seen on a continual basis is that when you get to higher highs and you have this type of volume you're going to be right back topside so bottom line the notes and bonds i suspect they're going to be fighting it out all day long king dollar king dollar down uh, nine ticks trade at 97 841 the euro is at 110, the yen is out here at 108.65, and the pound, which is on the move topside once again, is at 129.46. That thing looks like it wants to go to about the 131 level. Tom O'Brien, what's going on? Good morning. Another day in the market. We got some action. That S&P seems to like that round number of 3,100, right? There's no doubt, man. And uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, market said, Right off the first couple hours, try to get to a new all-time high. First day that it hasn't in quite some time. Uh, bottom line, let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim, as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, folks. And if you want to, don't forget, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, outstanding show. Kevin and his team, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, defined risk, has it all. If you haven't test driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, it's so easy to do. You're sitting on the site right now. Just hit that banner, bring it up. It'll allow you to trade paper money. And you can follow Kevin and his team each and every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, this day that started out so slow, I really was expecting it. I thought it looked like, and I'm, I, I mentioned this morning, we're, we feel like we're starting Thanksgiving week a little early. Oh, this man. is a slow, drifting market for sure that's yeah. having some trouble getting some momentum here as a bunch of news releases try to kind of negate each other out. So I, I don't know what to do here other than maybe keep your powder a little dry into next week. You know, Kevin, you know what's so cool? And Tommy, this is, this is amazing you're saying this, right? So pitch this. And, and folks, energy in general in the world to me is where it's at. So I, I'm, before the program today, my first question to you, Kevin, and I was almost going to text you saying, hey, I'm going to switch gears on you because I want to talk about are we already starting in the holiday deal? I mean, because you've sure. got such a great heads up in the, it, the past It feels like it, doesn't it? That, that when you're coming into the summer, you got to, you know, your bottom line, you know, you want to come into the summer. So that what my question would be is that, I mean, it, I absolutely agree with you. So inside the option market like when you come when we're coming into thanksgiving when we're coming into the christmas what do you what do you look at well I, you know you got to be a little careful i guess right sure mark you know there's times when markets trade with energy and they surge and then there's sometimes when markets drift and that doesn't mean they don't move but they don't move with any exaggeration or momentum or volume starts to lighten up you know or or moves don't hold yes when, when they go higher they kind of run out of gas and those are the things you got to look for right uh, in markets like this i feel no no and just be careful that you know uh rallies will run out of gas sell-offs will run out of gas yes right right you know and yesterday we got to see i mean we we're talking about it but you know bottom line is that uh Target held price, low sell price, and Home Depot kept going lower. So this is right. really intriguing. I mean, this is, a, this is well, we'll see whether it's actually a separation. I don't think it's going to be a separation for long myself. But uh, bottom line, that was intriguing, man, right? Yeah, a lot of these names, Tom, that are trading at all-time highs, their, their earnings and their forward 
guidance is really getting scrutinized. Yeah. And I think that's why you're seeing some weakness. When you're up at these levels and you've run like some of these stocks have run, you got to be perfect to hold these levels. And any weakness, um, I think, is getting, is getting at least discounted in some of these names. You saw it in Walmart, right? Yes. Look, yeah. look at that should have given all these traders a heads up when you saw Walmart surge higher and not hold. I thought that was really a warning signal for, for this uh, retail part of this earnings season. Yeah. So that's a, uh, it's a huge point. That, that's kind of what I'm I'm paying attention to for sure. No, I, I we can definitely see that because if you know, folks, if you put your side on the money manager side, this market is up huge for the year. Right. So it's like, and okay, we're at November 21st or 22nd or whatever it is, right? And to November 21st, it's like, hey man, you know, you're at highs. The prudent thing would seem to be to take some money off the table, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Or at least not activate new money at these high levels, right? Yeah. Just lighten your load on the upside and wait and cash, see if you get any reason, uh, you know, for this market to sell off between now and the end of the year and, and, and par participate then. But, yeah, this is tricky because, you know, you're, you're looking at a bunch of money managers, what you just said, Tom, with returns in the 20s. In I terms know. of percentile. Oh, it's a monster. And it's a monster you, number, man. It's, you get the final month, month of the year, and people are going to start protecting those profits. Yeah, it, it, totally, it totally makes sense. And I, I guess the, and once, I mean, Thanksgiving's next Thursday. Yeah. Right. And, and there's no data until actually Wednesday. If you notice on the calendar, you get a pretty big data dump next Wednesday, right before the holiday, and then nothing for the rest of the week. So it's actually not a bad week in terms of economic data, but it's one day you're getting a lot of it. Yeah. And then we had the uh, the Fed minutes yesterday. They came mm -hmm. out. That was kind of intriguing. I mean, you know, prior to that, when you look at the Fed fund future rate, I mean, they weren't banking in uh, another quarter point cut like for like almost a year and a half. <laughs> right, and right. I think Jerome Powell is what he really did. He, his comments and his rhetoric really solidified the fact that we're on hold. Yeah. How many times do I have to say it? I'm going to make it real clear. We're on hold yeah. for the time being. We want this dust to settle on these last few moves. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to add, so I looked up last year, because we all remember kind of how things went last year, yeah. Kevin, and it's pretty remarkable even to see it myself, and I don't know where we were. December 3rd, we were trading in the S&P at 28.14, and by Christmas Eve, or the day after, it was 23.16. So you're talking about Ooh. 500 S&P points in the month of December just last year alone, and I bet that people are aware of the type of sell-off that they could have. As you say, you got 20% profits, you're coming into the end of the year. That's just, even as I went back and looked at it, I said, my goodness, man, I can't believe it was actually 500 S&P points that we dropped in the month of December last year alone before. Of course, now we're sitting at 3,100. But uh, yeah. I bet that will add to people being a little bit worrisome as that comes in. Right. And two things about that, Tommy. Number one, it skews the percentages this year. Yes. Right. Because some of this year, what you did, you're making money back that yes. you had really last, the first week in October of last year. So if you take the first week in October last year till now, the returns aren't that great, right, right from then. But it's been, it's been a wild ride. As you know, that fourth quarter was a massive sell-off. Huge. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, a safe one, a great weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Great talking to you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, you stay Kevin. right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien, we do appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. Well, Tom, we got a little movement out here. Uh, S&Ps are down five when we went into that break, and uh, bottom line is that uh, you're down 11 and a half and uh, a little heartbeat here. We sure were. I made mention of that 3,100 price point, which is kind of right where oh, we yeah. started the show. We jumped up to 3,105 before I could even get the words out of my mouth. And then, yeah, we're trading at 3,097, man. We're actually now below where we were trading at at about 4 a.m., which was 3,098. And, of course, you can go back to last night. We had a low in the S&Ps of about 3,091, which kind of correlates to where we were right at about 1 p.m. yesterday. So that'll be interesting to see if we get down to that level. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, I, you know, I get the NQs up right now, folks. And so the NQs made a low yesterday at uh, 10 past one, and that low is 82.31. And, uh, you know, we're only 30 points away from it. And the NQs, folks, just so you, you understand how they uh, like to rock, they just went, uh, yeah, the, so in the last 10 minutes, they just went down 30 points. <laughs> so 30 points for the NQs, um, bottom line, is, is not a lot. And, uh, you know, the expansion of volume that we did have yesterday was pretty substantial. Hey, how about just a recap, and I mentioned it to Kevin, but I couldn't believe, would you have remembered that the S&Ps went down 500 points last December? Uh, no, because... It, I mean, and a, I knew it was an insane drop, right? I knew it was insane, but I couldn't believe when I actually pulled it up on the chart, and I have it up there right now, I had to put it back on, you know, a daily going back, and um, and that's not the full drop, that's just in December. And yet, yeah, December because it, 3rd, it started in October. That's right. Right. That's, yep. that's you, why... You, uh, you put it on the weekly, and that's I got the chart up, it started I can in see September. It. Look at We're that. We're sitting at a high of about 29.36. You went down for a low at the end of October of 26.03. Now, keep it in mind, right, because you trade from 26.03 up to a high of 2814 so you're talking about 200 plus S&P points to the upside yep. and then December 3rd and then the low I believe was December 26th um which you know Christmas Eve was a was a 
a bloodbath for sure. But I just couldn't believe when I pulled that up that it was 500 actually points from the high to the low just within the month of December. And as Kevin mentioned, though, I mean, you know, a lot of the gains, we, 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 we had it all back by February 25th, which is remarkable. And then still from 2,800, we're now up 300 points, more than 10%, even from that level, right? Even from that level, we're still up 10% from where we were at 2,800, as in we're sitting over 300 S&P points from that level. But if, you know, you wouldn't think that was that was by far the worst Christmas Eve yes. um, that we have ever had in terms of movement. And so that's going to be a little bit more on people's radar as you have huge profits. Things got decimated at the end of last year. And I'm sure there were a lot of people that saw bonuses disappear that could have been huge. And um, it was and, a 20 percent correction. 20 percent. Two yeah, zero. In, a month, in the final month of the year, too. Yeah. All right. Um, and 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 where I add things is we just saw the news come out yesterday, right, saying that the trade deal might not occur through the end of the year. Um, I see more possibilities for surprises to the downside than I do for the upside because I don't see a trade deal getting done. And even if it does get done, it's kind of you know, we're at all time highs. W what is the expectation that we jump, you know, 100 S&P points again, 200? It's possible. But I imagine that there could be a, a you know, a. a Things could dissolve further than I imagine they could resolve. No, and and listen, when you, when you're in the probability business, which investing is, the bottom line is that you know you're at this three thousand ninety six. Is it the next hundred points down versus up when you're at all time highs? And we you know have been at all time highs. I mean you know bottom line, it's been a straight line move up since October. You know, so. That is for sure, man. Um, let's go take a look at the, we got some movement. You know, we were talking about bonds a little bit earlier, folks. And what you have is that yesterday we had volume come in the, the note and bond market. Um, today, the volume is a monster. Okay, when Tommy and I were on the air and we started on the air yesterday, bottom line, um, I suspect we're going to get a couple million contracts. And let me see what we end up getting, actually. And this is, and it was because we, had, we were at, the 1.1 million contracts, which is good contract volume coming into the marketplace. And yeah, we get 2.1. This morning, folks, we're at 1.49. Now, what had happened is that you got to a higher high. You're coming into a swing point that what you're looking for is like a 2.2 million contract. Yesterday, we had 2.1. And the bond market, once again, is moving forward. You know, when we just did that update, when I did that update at the beginning of, of the hour, you know, the bonds were down at 129, this is the 10-year, or 129.14. Well, we just got a pop, a, a pop to 129.19. Um, yeah. So this is saying quite a bit. And the correlation, uh, bottom line, is that they were also whacking gold. You know, gold got down at uh, 14.63, and gold's rejected lower price also. Silver's actually going to go positive. So this is going to be interesting to see. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what's moving all of this right now. Well, we know buying and selling, but I'm just and saying in general. Do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, silver just went positive. Um, you know, so there's gonna there's some movement out here, man. Um, hey, I mean, we're we're up at three thousand one hundred and thirteen as of eight a.m. and we're now seventeen S and P points below that level. That's more than half a percent. And um, and just like you said, there's really not anything traumatic that's driving that. We got a weekly jobless number. You might say that it was a little bit more, um, a little bit um, more pessimistic than the market may have wanted. 227,000 for the week, uh, basically unchanged. But they were looking for a number of 219. Okay. So they come in at 227. You know, 8,000 jobs in the term of the, the country's economy shouldn't be a dire no. um, change of things, right? Uh, but so no real huge dramatic news, and we just, and we're watching the market kind of sell off a bit to 3,096. Well, just yeah. as you're talking, you must be selling the Dow Industrial simultaneously, Tom, because <laughs> what, what happened? we'll I find out what's inside of this. Uh, the Dow's down 92. Now, let's just see what is the driving forces inside the Dow. And we know... You know, inside the Dow, the, the weighting's so skewed, folks, that you don't need yes. much to really get the thing going. Boeing, Home Depot, right? Well, Home Depot's up today, though. Yeah, Boeing's down. There you go, down 21 points. Okay. Yeah, we got Boeing putting 21 uh, points in the downside. 3M, 16, travel is 10. Now, for for the Dow being down 85, this is not, that's not a lot of points that the negative in. It just happens to be that you have a lot of these equities that are putting three or four 
a yes. five points to the negative, and there's not a uh, lot of positive inside there. You get Home Depot putting five positive, Exxon Mobil three, and Caterpillar yeah. two. There's uh, only three stocks that are adding more than a single point to the Dow, and it's two, three, and five, you yeah, know, so it's kind of spread evenly to the negative side. It is. So yeah. let's go take a look at the uh, NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness there. Uh, the strength, uh, you got uh, NetEase up uh, 3%, Tesla's up 1.6, Mercado Livre 1.1. I see. So watch this, folks. This is, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time, man, that it's the NDX 100, and inside the NDX, it's the chip stocks, man. They can bring you up and down. And look at this. Clack is down 5.8%. AMAT, 3.2%. Lam Research, 3 They're selling these uh, chips off in a monster way. So, hey, we got natural gas inventory breaking right when we come back from this break, too. That's a beautiful thing. Let's see how, many, how much natural gas we got, how cold it is across the country. Tommy and I come right back, folks. Stay right there. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow off 81, Nasdaq off 27, S&P's off 12. And, Tom, it looks like we got uh, stockpiles fell 94 BCF. They sure did, man. And I got that natural gas, the December contract up right now. And, boy, oh, boy, we just saw the price jump about four pennies from 255, wow. looking at the December contract. Look at that. And you're trading right now 258.3 about. 
Um, quite a drop, man. 94, the estimate, like you said, about 90. The whisper number, I think you mentioned, was about a decline of 89 billion cubic feet. Yes. Um, I guess that cold spell, we got a little bit of coolness in the air in Florida, but I know the rest of the country, man, they've really had some cold um, tearing yes. through the Northeast and so forth. So everybody using their natural gas, depleting those stockpiles even more than the analyst had estimated. And uh, natural gas jumping around as we speak, now trading at about 258 but it looks to be a little bit of higher price pressure as those stockpiles uh, come in under even what they thought. Yeah, so this will be interesting to watch this the rest of the day, folks, because, you know, natural gas, uh, no doubt, you know, bottom line, it went to time. You should be able to catch a bid. Um, that being said, <laughs> we know that, you know, this has been a consolidation for quite some time. You know, the top yeah. of that is like 28 or 290. Uh, the bottom of it uh, lately has been, you know, uh, 250, two, we hit 240 a couple months ago. Yep. Um, so it should be a big day because it, it should be able to hold price. I mean, if that, you know, if you're just looking at the fundamentals, that, okay, you know, a little more of a drawdown. Uh, but we know, that being said, if you have been looking at the fundamentals in natural gas for, for quite some time, you're in trouble. <laughs> Oof, right? You know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the market that... It, my take is that the market, you don't want to trade. That's what it really comes down to. You know what I mean? I mean, that's why we like bringing up some of these in the Nadex platform. Wherever you're doing it, man, get some defined risk because, boy, right. oh, boy, these moves can be so quick. That's why I like doing that for the oil trades on Wednesday as well. Um, how about oil, man? Let's jump back to oil as we talk yes. about it because talk about a run yesterday on that oil number, right? This we're is. Trading, we're, we're trading right up to 58. We're trading to 57.91 right now. Yep. I'm going to explain this oil chart right now. Uh, and yesterday, when that number was approaching, just to put things in perspective, early, early yesterday morning, 3 a.m., we're trading with a 54 handle in the price of January crude. All right. We get the number at 1030, which is what I have on the chart right now. We were trading uh, at about 5575, call it, before that number. Yeah. And it just extended the gains by about almost 1 o'clock. You're trading at 5735, and it didn't stop, man. We did back down to under 57, 56, 68 as of about 5 a.m., but we're up at $58 about, and you go $3.00. From 3 a.m. last uh, yesterday, so you know the span of 30 hours. Oh, yeah. 3 a.m. Three dollars in the price of oil, man. Um, that would that's that's a that's a volatile market just like we're used to. But man, oh man. No, no doubt. And the last high that was generated out here, folks, you know, happened to be Monday at 58.17. So okay. it's going to challenge this number again, you know, and we'll see uh, if it can basically uh, handle it, you know. They, the volume characteristic is not there right now, but guess what? The price, okay. the price spread is, you know, so. Oh, $3. It's pretty remarkable oh. that we get $3 moves in the price of crude when it's, you know, one of the highest demand markets out there in terms of the, the amount. You put that in perspective, the amount of oil we use on a daily basis, and it moves that much, but just remarkable. No, every day, no doubt. Every day, exactly. Uh, Fill those tanks up. Yep. So let's go. Uh, oh, well, we know. Hey, listen, this is going to be a big deal. Uh, it hasn't got announced yet, but the speculation, folks, is that uh, Schwab is going to be taking over TD Ameritrade. Um, Talk about a, a, a combination of two giants, man, oh. and we're in the trading industry, you know, TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, a sponsor, man, oh, man, quite a, uh, a, a combination if that deal comes to fruition. There, there's no doubt. So you get uh, TD up $7.94, you get Schwab up three seventy. dollars um, let's just see what they have to say because they haven't announced it yet. Uh, they it was saying that they. Okay. And did did you go ahead? Go ahead. I was just gonna say, did you see Ameritrade back off from the gains that it had, man? It was up to fifty three dollars and sixty four cents, and now you're back down to forty seven. So it's more than six dollars paired off the kind of uh, exuberance that it had at the peak early this morning. Look at that, huh? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be it's, it's going to be really uh, intriguing watching this whole thing play out. Um, that's it's a big number, and the, you know the industry in general. We can go uh, go through it maybe a little bit later, but yeah, you I know, mean, Schwab had as Schwab had the same exact kind of you know huge exuberance early, at up to fifty one eighty one, and now back to about forty seven eighty eight. Both of them up dramatically, and um, the numbers are staggering, man. I have the article up here. We can just jump to some of the numbers because five trillion, five trillion with a T combined assets, the two of them would control. Yep. And it's a three point eight trillion for Schwab, one point three trillion for TD Ameritrade. 
And uh, I mean, just staggering, man, in terms of where that comes from, um, you know, the, the combination between the two of them. And I wanted to get. Yeah. So Schwab had a market cap of 57 billion TD Ameritrade, 22.4. I think those numbers okay. probably as of the close yesterday, um, they're, they're the two biggest publicly traded brokerages out there. Um, so that's in, you know, I, it's a great, you know, you got somebody in the den over there saying, will they be allowed? I haven't seen any talk about um, antitrust concerns in anything that I pulled up today. And, and, and maybe that's because you have, uh, whether it's interactive brokers, whether get, it's that's JP right. Morgan, E-Trade, and the Robin, the Robin Hood. Hoods. You got, the you, likes. Get, you, you got down to zero commissions. The history of, you know, the brokerage business in general with TFNN, folks, okay, this one here is really a cool one because yeah. um, what happened is that we had CyberTrader as a uh, advertiser since like 1998. Early, early, yep. That's right. And CyberTrader, folks, is one of the uh, best electronic platforms out there. And what happened is that Schwab bought CyberTrader because of the platform. Yes. Then what ended up happening is that Schwab kept us for another seven years or something. Then the, we got lost in the mix. I got lost in the mix at some point of Schwab. And when it ended up happening, I got, we got lost one month. And then I was at the uh, trade show and we got, t t uh, we got Think or Swim. It was Think or Swim. That's right. That's right. Tom it Sosnoff, you got it, it. That's right. So that happened. And then TD Ameritrade took over Think or Swim and we were... It, I crossed my fingers. We were really lucky. We were one of the only advertisers that they actually kept because what happens is these companies get bigger and bigger, folks, okay? It takes more in order to basically stay there. But what ended up happening is that because compliance-wise we had everything they needed, we were lucky. That was the real yeah. bottom line, okay? And they so, liked what they had in place at Thinkorswim. You know, TD Ameritrade, they've, they've kept that brand, of course, because right. of what it represents. You know, you have the TD Ameritrade platform, but you have the Thinkorswim platform because they believe in, in, in as we do, man. I mean, I got it up right now. I oh, trade yeah. on it um, for sure. So and, go and, ahead. But, and yeah. what, what happened, too, is that that was the same thing, that TD Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade bought Thinkorswim for the platform, and then they integrated the Thinkorswim platform into their whole system. So sure. it's going to be really intriguing now because we still know, and in, in, in fact, the big options guys at um, Schwab is still there. If you remember, Randy used to do a show right here. Randy <laughs> Frederick, I yeah. believe he's their I, chief options principal. I'm right. not sure the exact title, but right. he is great right. guy, man. Um, yeah. And I know he put out a book that we, you know, promoted as we, well, we, man. Um, he did a program himself at TFNN for a while, right? Um, as Tom Sosnoff did that for a while. It'll quick, be really interesting. Quick, to see 21 how this plays years, out. right? Yeah. <laughs> My God, unreal. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow right now at our 93. Nasdaq off 28. Yes. S&P's off 11. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, down 78, Nasdaq's off 23, S&Ps are off nine and a half. And uh, let's go over to Bitcoin, Tom. You know, uh, yeah. we haven't looked at this for a while, but uh, you get a little movement uh, once again in Bitcoin, folks. Uh, you're at you're down 477. Oh yeah, this is going to be important. Okay, so uh, man, so. Last it's been pop. a quick fall since, yeah, that 10,000, right? Yeah, you know, you got the pop up to 9933, and you're going to the bottom of the range here, which is 7305. So let me pull this back a little bit. Boy, oh boy, what a Christmas present this would be. Bad Christmas present, Grinch. I was like, wait a second, are you loading up on Bitcoin? No, no. Grinch, that's <laughs> what I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, for people that own it, you know what I mean? Of course, because, no, of course, yeah. You know, if you break this uh, 7,300 level, folks, uh, there's no reason you can't get down to like, uh, oh my God, 5,300. These numbers we deal with with Bitcoin are like really strange, man. <laughs> they sure are. Yeah. Do you talk about defined risk? If I'm trading Bitcoin, 100% of my investment I'm putting in there better be the risk I'm willing to risk because um, you could wake up tomorrow and that price could be 3,000. Oh, yeah. You know? Or you could wake up tomorrow and it could be 12,000. Right. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about that. Um, you get WeWork just came across the tape, folks, saying that they're going to uh, basically cut 2,400 jobs globally. And I'm not sure exactly, uh, you know, how many jobs they have out there, but 2,400 to start. Uh, no, no doubt. Um, SoftBank pairing some of those uh, cash burn. Oh yeah. That they, now that they basically own the whole company. Yeah, big time. So let's go over to L Brand. So this is gonna, this is pretty intriguing. L Brands, okay, which is Victoria's Secrets as well as Bath and Body Works. That's that's the main drivers be, behind uh, Bed Bath and I mean behind uh, L Brands. Victoria's Secrets, while well, they they take, take in 2.7 billion. Um, is that right? No, yeah, they take in 13 billion a year. 13 billion yes. a year. They took in 2.7 billion this quarter. Now out of that, Victoria's Secrets is 7.4 billion. And you get Bath and Body Works at 4.6. And look at that three-year growth on Victoria's Secret, negative 1.3%. Oh, yeah. Man. That, that business, uh, great business when it was there. But the bottom line is that, you know, you, you can buy this stuff a lot less expensive. It's almost like, you know, uh, you got the, the you know, the, your buddies came in the razor market. They came in the, what, the sunglass market. Yep, you know, Warby Parker, Harry's, you got Dollar Shave, right? I mean, exactly. as it, you got a lot of those, um, you know, women's apparel. You got Kylie Jenner launching her own plant, um, billion dollar makeup company, right? That Alta is sure. now pushing, um, that just got basically purchased a majority stake of. That's taking business from somebody, man. Oh, yeah. And you can't listen, I mean, on, on just about every radio station, if you've ever heard Third Love, you know, I don't, that's still a private company, but the bottom line is that they run ads. It's a, they sell bras. Uh, okay. And they have, I mean, they, they run ads like, 
I mean, it sounds like, it seems like you hear them every 30, 40 minutes on, it doesn't matter which station uh, it's on. So let's just see what they have to say, though, because the bottom line is that, I mean, no, well, first off, the stock is down in a dramatic fashion. I believe it went from 85 to 17 in three years. Let me just yeah, see Yeah, just thing. huge, man. Right. Public companies are not supposed to be um, having growths with negatives in them, so. Right. 98, actually. 98 <laughs> in November, uh, three years ago. No, four yeah. years ago, four years ago. Uh, November of 2015, 98. Down to 17, well, down to 15, actually. So let's see what they have to say here. Okay, so they're saying Bath, Bath and Body Works is giving them some uh, juice. Okay, so growth 60. Uh, oh, boy, oh, look at that comp sales for Victoria's Secret. Look at that. On so comp sales at stores and online fell 7% last quarter compared with the average estimate of 4.7. That's a, that's a big number. That business is uh, going south. Now, Bath, Bath and Body Works rose. The, me, the measure. It doesn't say. What is the metric? It says that they're metric. Using. So I believe yeah. it's talking about comp sales again, right? Increased okay. 9%. Yeah, which saved at Bath them. And, Above. I mean, that's a big number. Bath and Body Works, you know, yeah. for sure. Um, I'm just going to jump over because I think it ties in well. I was reading an article earlier about Macy's, and they're blaming sluggish sales on weak shopping malls, right? Really ties okay. in. You think about Victoria's Secret, you think about Bath and Body Works, yep. um, two kind of staples of the mall retail sector that you walk past. Maybe they they rely, especially Victoria's Secret, relying on that mall foot traffic. And, um, you know, you have Macy's out here saying their stores at weak malls suffered during the quarter. It says it's going to offer more details to investors at a meeting in February on what it plans to do with some of those stores. It seems like this is the continuing deal. I thought Macy's had decided to close all the stores at weak malls, but they still got, I think they're just saying, you know, weaker U.S. shopping malls were hurt by slower foot traffic during the last quarter, leading to a steeper than expected sales decline. And I wonder if that's going to be the mantra from the CEO of L Brands, especially on the Victoria's Secret side. But how do you square that if you're growing Bath & Body Works? Maybe there's some difference in the online, um, but I see that Bath & Body Works, they're, 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 they, I associate them with buy two, get one free type deals as you walk past that store. You know, Bath & Body Works always has a yes. three for two type deal that seems to capitalize versus um, the retail companies have done so well where they have a brand that people love that you actually seek them out, you order them online. I don't see that being the Bath & Body Works type of business, business model. No, no doubt. And, you know, what you just brought up, now this gets really intriguing, folks, about Macy's getting rid of their stores that, uh, you know, that they thought were weaker. And I really like Macy's, okay? Sure. And, and guess what? I have a, and we have a beautiful mall here, International Mall, okay? Great mall. I haven't been there in a year and a half. <laughs> um, you know what? Just so it gets lost, I think Macy's is at West Shore. Even oh, is it? The two of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I, well, no I agree. I haven't, been there. I haven't been to West Shore either. <laughs> that's why I say it jokingly, as in that's how lost the malls get. You know, you're not right. even. And, and to be fair, they're two. I, I confuse which stores are in each one myself all the time because they're two pretty decent malls. They, and, they'd be Class A malls. They're only a mile you know? away from each other. Yeah, yeah Class right. A malls in, in Tampa. Um, but I agree. I agree completely. When I was doing the show with Basil um, a couple weeks ago, the morning program, we got a call about Macy's, and uh, we had a great conversation. I think the consensus was, tell me where they fit in the retail sector. Um, and, and, and the caller, Basil, and myself could not really identify, you know, that it, it's, it's not a bad store. They got everything in there. Yep. But, man, oh, man, they, they're bigger than a warehouse they got everything you can think of, and they send out – I have a Macy's card. I haven't used it in a while, but I have a Macy's card, right? I get deals all the time that are almost meaningless because everything is save 25%, save this, save that. Right. They just um, – I love polo brands, which they have a bunch of, but right. again, you know, it's not something that I'm going to go um, – actively try and spend that money when you, you're not getting a deal. You're not getting a bargain, that's for sure. And, you know, I get the chart up here right now, folks. This is really yeah, dangerous. I mean, it is. It, the low is out there, 1420. We hit 1430 today. This is pounding those lows, and this is saying that Macy's wants to go to $7 or $5. So, you know, $12 would be next, but this is, this is a, 
a chart that is like, oh, you get it. I mean, it's just pounding it with volume. And we're not, you know, oh. on the And market. even I think that call came in when Macy used to sit somewhere at, you know, 17 bucks. And we're now, yeah. you know, more than $2. That's, that's 12, 14, 15%. It's, it's huge numbers. It's, like it's moving. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow's off 83. Nasdaq's down 25. S&P's off 10. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow down 89, uh, Nasdaq off 28, S&P's off 10 and a half. Some of the higher volume equities out here, folks. Uh, you get advanced micro down a uh, dollar. We have uh, Uber Technologies up a dollar 36. Not quite sure what, uh, what the bid is there, but uh, it has a bid, no doubt. Um, TD Ameritrade, of course, up $7.90. You get Schwab up 367. So you can see the market likes the deal. Uh, it, it's, oh, man. Yeah, yeah when, when both of those can go to higher price, folks. Uh, Bottom line, you're at the zero commissions, and uh, we'll see how they are going to end up making their money. But I hope, I hope, I would love to. I, I hope somebody. I want to hear the conversation about antitrust. I really do. I mean, you know, I made. Mean, there's a lot of competitors. I would just love to hear it because the two biggest publicly traded brokers. Right. Um, I can't see that being good for investors. You know, Robinhood's there. Sure. You know, you have interactive brokers, but. That is going to squash a lot of competition, man. I had Bloomberg on early this morning, like 6 a.m., and I saw a TD Ameritrade ad, 
with options by Thinkorswim, one of their segments, directly followed by a Schwab ad. Directly. And I was like almost laughing. So I, I, you know, I would love to hear how that's going to affect consumers because number one and number two, my goodness. Right. And if we go over to Interactive Brokers right now, uh, not, not getting hit bad, but, you know, you're down 32 cents and all these brokerages were down anyway. Uh, but let me look, pull us back a little bit further because this would be the biggest loser out of it. I mean, I mean, you yeah. know, monopolies are not good. They're illegal for a reason, man. And, and yeah, you can argue that, you, that there's competitors, but, you know, you could argue the same thing if we let Walmart and Target collide, you know, and combine that there'd still be competitors. But man, oh, man, the consumer would get hurt. And this is the same type of deal of, of um, you know, brokers, the top biggest public companies. We'll see. It'd be interesting. They will. Stay right there, folks. Well, we got uh, our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, Think of Swim, coming up next. And then our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Love you. Oh, go get him, folks.